Hey y'all, and welcome back to the character creation course. This is the second of three retopology videos that we're going to be doing, and in today's video, I'm going to be retopping the shirt. So if you want to check out how we got up to this point, you can click on this card right up here, and it'll take you back to the beginning of this playlist. Otherwise, let's go ahead and hide everything that we are not going to be working with today in this video, which is everything except the head, the hands, and obviously the shirt. So now that everything is hidden except for what we're going to be working with, let's go ahead and select the shirt. Now we want to add in a new object at the exact point of origin as our shirt because it'll be really useful when we add in the mirror modifier so that way it's mirroring exactly on the x-axis. But to do that, we need to make sure that our 3D cursor is at the point of origin for our shirt. So with the shirt selected, hit Shift S and then cursor to selected. And it'll move the 3D cursor down to that orange point of origin that we see there. From there, what we wanna do is add in just a circle. Now you can really add in anything here, but for retopping the shirt, it's gonna be best if you add in a 12 vertex circle. So we're gonna add in a circle here and then come over down to the operator panel in our bottom left and change the number of vertices to 12. Now that we've added in our circle, it's time to add some modifiers and adjust our settings so that retopping in Blender is really easy. So now that we have our circle added and in place, with it selected, let's come over to the properties panel and select the modifiers tab, which is this blue wrench icon over here. And we're gonna add in two modifiers. The first is the mirror modifier, which will make it so that we only have to retop half of the shirt and it will retop the other half for us. And the second is the shrink wrap modifier, which will help with making sure that our mesh is actually sticking to the shirt instead of just hovering above it or around it. Now that we've done that, we need to adjust some of the visibility settings so that way as we're retopping, we can see exactly what we're working with. So come up here to the top for viewport shading and change the color from material or single to random, which is going to give every object in your scene a different color, which makes it real easy to see the colors of what you're working on versus what you're snapping to. And then for the final step, we want to come over to the object properties panel here, this orange square here, and we want to come down to viewport display. Now the viewport display options that we will select are wireframe, all edges, and then we also want to select this in front. And the reason we're selecting the in front is that it's going to allow us to see our retopped mesh in front of the sculpted mesh. And as we are retopping, we may turn it on, we may turn it off, but just set it on by default because it'll be a little bit easier when we start actually adding in mesh. So with our settings correct, it's time to start retopping by starting with the sleeve. So let's go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode, A to select everything, and then what we're gonna do is make this original circle go to right here on our object. It's going to be the very, very base of the shirt right before the cuff because we'll come back and model the cuff after we've retopped the rest of the shirt. So go ahead and move the circle to right there on your object. Now that our circle is at the very base of the wrist, what we're going to do is duplicate that and place the additional circle right here where the shirt puffs up, approximately here where we have an elbow, right here for the shoulder, and then right here, which will behave as the shirt seam for the actual shirt. So go ahead and simply hit Shift D, move it to the new position and scale it up so that it's sitting around the shirt sleeve at that point and you kind of scale it down and then just repeat that process and make sure that it lines up. Now that we have our 12 sided circles around the sections where we had drawn out with our annotation brush, it's time to bridge them together. To do that, alt and select one of the rings and then shift alt select the next ring up and then simply right click and you'll get this option for bridge edge loops click that and now it's bridged up and then simply repeat that up the arm. Okay, and the shirt is done. Now at this point, we wanna come back over to our modifiers panel and choose the target for the shrink wrap modifier. So at this point, we'll choose the target, 
grab the eyedrop and select the shirt. And now we can see that our shirt sleeves are actually strapped to the shirt itself using that shrink wrap modifier. But if we go back into edit mode, we can see that there is actually some double edges here. Now, if you are okay with that, then at this point, you could just leave it alone and continue retopping. But I'm really not okay with it. I don't like looking at these double edges, but having the shrink wrap modifier on will still help us. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly clean this up. And to do that, I'm gonna turn on snapping. Now with snapping turned on, which you will need for retopping the shirt back and the rest of it, we're going to need our snapping settings set to face, closest, uh, be affected by move, rotation, and scale, and then we want to project the individual elements. Now you can turn on a line rotation to target or project onto self as well if you want it, but really we only need this project individual elements, and that will ensure that each vertice is actually attached to the sculpted shirt. So I'm going to clean up these sleeves, and then we'll continue retopping the rest of the shirt. So now that we aren't seeing double vision anymore from the shrink wrap modifier, it's time to retop the chest and the back. So let's go ahead and select this front edge right here and control right click to the front, which will generate a new face and a new edge where we place it and drag that edge towards the center line. Now you'll notice that it goes past the center line. And the reason for that is the mirror modifier is not stopping them. It's just mirroring it across. So in order to clip it to the center, so that way we can just focus on one side and not have to worry about you know duplicating mesh on the other side let's go to the mirror modifier in the properties panel and turn on clipping and then drag that edge back towards the center and then if we look at this shirt what we can see is that there's going to be a problem here and the reason for that is this edge needs to go around the shoulder top of the, you know, top of the shirt. And then we're going to have an opening in the shirt here. So we need to add in an extra edge to make this one long face into two faces. To do that, hit control R, select, and then place the edge. And then I'm going to hit G to not rely on the shrink wrap modifier. And then from there, we just take this face loop around the top of the shirt until we end up on the opposite right here. Now, if you don't have the F2 add-on installed, which we added in the previous retopology video, let's go ahead and do that now because it will make the rest of this really, really easy. So to add that in, just go up to the edit and then preferences. And once you have preferences open, click on add-on and then search for F2. And then you'll see this mesh F2 add-on. Just click the checkbox and enable it. And what the F2 add-on allows you to do is select this single vertex here, move your cursor to where you want the new faces vertex to appear and hit F and then just drag your mouse. And then we can reposition this as well. And you know what, we'll take this and reposition it up. So that way we're keeping the faces somewhat similar in size. And then simply repeat that process right there and to right here, and then the last one to right about there. Okay, and then we can kind of do that coming down as well, and then connect it at the center. And just make sure those are snapping at the center line, and do the same thing on the back. And then we can select these back edges, or maybe just these two and control right click to add in the new face and then make sure you snap them to the center line. And then I'm gonna move these over so they mirror a little bit closer to what we have on the front. Now the in front is making things a little bit weird as you can see because we are focusing on the retopped area. So what we need to do is actually kind of finish this up and add in somewhat of a uh, collar section here. So we'll take this edge here and control right click up kind of rotate and scale this down just a bit. 
and then fill this in so that way we have a solid collar coming around and for that I guess we can just control right click over here and that will be fine and so now we have our collar and then we can drive this edge and hit F to fill in that back face all right, and with that, the front of our shirt and the back of our shirt is done. And if we really wanna see how that looks, we can just turn off the in front. And you know what? I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna drag this up a little bit closer so that it sits on the edge here. We'll move this face down, this edge down. I'm just gonna pull it closer so it's still on the shirt, but sitting as close to the neck as we can conceivably get it. Okay, now that we've got that, let's work on the front and sides of our shirt. So the front of the shirt is pretty simple. We know this face loop is gonna come all the way down. So we can just kind of grab this edge and then control right click our way down. Now we wanna make sure that it's also following the form of the shirt. So like right here, we have a section where the shirt is going in. So we know we're gonna have an edge loop running around to show that uh, inward motion of the shirt. And we also know that the shirt kind of puffs out here at the bottom. So we're gonna make sure that we have an edge loop running here as well. And then we just put one here for good measure to kind of keep the faces roughly the same size. And then the last edge is gonna come down all the way towards the center there. And then we'll just rotate this and make sure that they're all snapped to the center. Now here is where the faces get a little bit more problematic. So we have this face loop right here that needs to come across, but we obviously don't have a face here. So we need to add one in using the loop cut tool, control R, we'll add in a face loop and then grab this edge and hit F to add in the face there. Now we are gonna run into a problem because this face loop needs to come down and this face loop needs to come down as well, but this face loop needs to connect side to side. So let's go ahead and do something like this. There we go. And then that gives us a pull right here because we're gonna have a face loop coming around the shoulder and we have a face loop coming down and we have a face loop going around and it's all based off this one vertex right there. And then we can just take this down this entire side and then just bring these three face loops all the way down as well. Now at this point, our shirt is basically done. We just need to repeat what we did on the front of the shirt with the same faces on the back. So this comes towards the side here, snap it to the center, and then this also comes toward the side, and then we just kind of fill in this area. So our shirt is filled in and it looks pretty decent actually if we were looking at it from here if we were to shade it smooth it's gonna look like a shirt but it's very very blocky and normal maps can only do so much so we need to add in some additional detail here so to add in this detail let's just come over here and grab our loop cut tool and then make sure that our number of cuts is set to one so that way we can add in detail one edge loop at a time and then we're basically just going to come in here and add in some extra edge loops now the shrink wrap modifier at this point is just going to help us keep those loops attached to the sculpted shirt because snapping can do some weird things and so i'm going to add in an extra face loop here and one here so at this point you want to try to keep the faces somewhat similar in size so we're gonna add in a couple right over here and then definitely one at the shoulder and armpit area. And then we're gonna add in a face loop going all the way around here, one here, and then also one here. So at this point, our shirt is a lot closer to what the actual shirt looked like. And you know, we could go in further and adjust if we really wanted to, but at this point, I think we're good as far as adding in new topology to the base of the shirt. So it's time to model the collar and then the cuff. 
So to model the collar, let's go ahead and hit Alt and select the entire collar up here. And then we wanna deselect this one vertex at the center because otherwise the solidify modifier will make it have problems, which we'll add that in in a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply the shrink wrap modifier. So make sure you're in object mode and then apply. And that's gonna just force all of our vertices onto the mesh itself because now we don't need it to snap to the shirt anymore that part is done. So we can go ahead and apply the shrink wrap modifier. But if you weren't happy with how you laid out your vertices, definitely go in there and adjust the vertices as you want them and then apply it. So now what we're gonna do is turn off snapping with shift tab and then E to extrude up and Z to lock that extrusion to the Z axis. From there, we can just kind of scale it out and start getting a vaguely collar shape. And again, we can extrude and then we can go ahead and just scale it out just a little bit further and extrude along the z-axis to give us the full collar. Now that collar is a bit ridiculous. So let's go ahead and grab these faces here with shift alt select and scale them all down just a bit so the collar is a bit more manageable and then position it a little bit better to the collar shape that we are looking for. So now that we have our collar made, let's go ahead and select these two face loops again and come over to the object data properties panel, which is this upside down green triangle. And then we wanna add a new vertex group and call this collar. Now to add these vertices to that vertex group, all we have to do is hit assign with all those vertices selected. And just to make sure that it was successful, we can deselect and then select with that vertex group selected and it'll show us all of the vertices that exist in that group. Now that we've done that, let's go over to our modifiers and add in a solidify modifier. Now this solidify modifier is going to solidify the entire shirt, but we can limit it to a vertex group. So just click on the vertex group here and choose collar. And what that's going to do is just make a solid collar for us and not double any of the vertices on the rest of the shirt. And then we can adjust the thickness as we want for the collar to actually be. Now, what I'm noticing is I don't like this flat top here. So I'm just going to add in an extra edge loop and we'll move the whole thing up on the Z axis so that it's going to have a little bit more of a curve to it. And maybe scale these in. Now that we have the collar solidified, some final adjustments are important. And there we go. I'm gonna take this up just a little bit further so that it's kind of covering the neck. And there we go. So the last thing here for the solidify modifier is just to make sure that all of the faces are in the right direction. So let's turn on face orientation and we notice we have a lot of red here. So go ahead to hit A to select everything and then shift N to recalculate those normals. So now it's not going to be inside out as far as our faces are concerned. So we can turn off face orientation and now it's time to model the cuff. So at this point, we don't need the base sculpted shirt anymore. It's just gonna get in the way. So we can go ahead and hide it and then turn off the wireframe and all edges over under viewport display. And so now what we need to do is just add in our cuff. So we can go ahead and just actually grab this edge loop down here at the bottom and simply extrude off. And you wanna take the cuff to roughly where the cuff would end on our actual hand. So something like that is probably gonna be okay. We can adjust it, maybe scale it down just a bit and grab these vertices and scale them down as well. And then because cuffs are supposed to be solid, let's go ahead and select these faces here and add them to that vertex group. So just come over here and then assign. Now. With that done, we can then adjust the thickness of the collar again by coming over here and playing around with the thickness. And I actually think that thickness is gonna be a bit better overall for what we're working with. So at this point, guys, our shirt is completely retopped. And the only final adjustments that you would wanna make are things to make sure that you can't see other objects through the shirt. For example, right here, we can see that the mesh itself is going underneath the mesh of the head that we retopped in the previous video. And that's not gonna be great. So you could then turn on snapping and just make sure it's snapped to the outside. And then maybe if it's 
you know, not perfect, you can just move it out a little bit so that way you can't see the head underneath. And just kind of do that for the rest of the vertices all the way around and you'll be fine. Just remember in this course, we didn't make a body. So you're just kind of giving the illusion that a body exists without actually physically connecting the head and the shirt meshes. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video where we talk about retopping the hands.